Hey friends, it's Brian. I've taken a little bit of time off from the Jeep project. I went on a scuba vacation last week in Cozumel, Mexico. Be sure to check out those videos. It was an awesome vacation. Dove with Cozumel Marine World. Uh, fantastic dive operation. Saw some great stuff. Uh, you know, Cozumel is like a box of chocolates. You never know what kind of dive you're going to get from it. Anyway, so let's get back to the Jeep. So I'm still working on pulling the engine. That's what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to put you guys into time lapse because I want to clean up under here a little bit before I start crawling under here. Uh, where we're at on this is um, I need to get the exhaust manifold off. That's that's today's project from hell. Um, yeah, it's there, there's just no nice way to get. And I really don't need the manifold. I need the downpipe because of the downpipe drops down under here, comes up around the oil pan, and heads back by the transmission, and the bolts are strategically designed to be impossible to reach, or nearly impossible. So anyway, what I'm trying to do is avoid taking this part of the fender assembly off. I really don't want to touch this. The body shop has asked that I put the grill back in before I take the frame over to have it straightened. And really, the whole reason this engine's coming out, in case you're just joining me, is the that's the frame. It's up against the engine. It doesn't belong there. There should be a nice gap there. And in looking at this, we decided it would be a lot easier for them to work on it if the engine was out of their way. Because that's probably what's holding the engine up. Anyway, without further ado, off to time lapse you guys go. And I'm going to get started on getting the engine out. Uh, one of the decisions I have to make is, am I going to take the transmission out too? And... Yeah, I'd rather not because I really think I need a new rear main oil seal, but Jeep engineers, yeah, yeah. I don't have anything nice to say about the access to the bolts, so let me just get started on this and see where I can get with this exhaust manifold. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, that went really easy, you would be right. So, let me show you what we're working with here. So, uh, apparently one of the bolts is broken, and that's a good thing. And I'm using my DeWalt uh, portable 20-volt lights with my breaker bar and my 20-volt um, impact wrench. <laughs> All right, so I think we've got that. That went a whole lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Now, in self-defense, I did spray it with PB Blaster before I went on vacation. So that probably had a lot to do with it. But let's get under here and see what is going on. Sorry about the wonky shot. This is not National Geographic. So, uh, i got a bolt up here, but I don't, can't tell if it's doing anything. Oh, it is. It is. Oh, how the hell do I get to that? Oh, that's lovely. Shit access. All right, so I got one bolt left. Hey, you know, this has gone so well, I'm going to make a fool of myself and leave this on video. Although I do see some broken stuff up there. That's not good. I, I see some broken stuff right up there. Uh, I can't get the camera in my hands up there. But I definitely see something that the engine mount pushed into. Uh, let's just see how loose this is. Yeah. There's a possibility I'm going to need a exhaust manifold, which is fine. This looks to be a stock one, and the stock ones are known to be caca la perro, as we would say in Spanish. <laughs> So let me see 
we are going to do this in video. So I'm going to separate the camera up. And I'm hoping you guys can see the fun parts. Actually, I'm going to turn this around. <laughs> Not sure how that's gonna go, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and keep you all in the thick of the action here. I ain't making no promises, and I'm keeping myself under the axle because I just don't trust this engine. Um, I don't honestly know what the hell's holding it in. So this would be a lot easier with three people and almost as easy with two people. With one person, this is a circus and that's why I only work on it a little bit at a time. Really need thin little sockets in here. But I happen to have wobble sockets handy so we're going to see if we can get it with wobble sockets. My access looks really whacked up in here. So I don't, I'm just trying to see if I can get a seat. It's not seeming to want a seat. So I'm going to try, let's see if I can get up in here with my hand. Now with wobble sockets, you've got to disengage the socket a little bit in order to get the wobble. And we definitely need the wobble up in here. Uh, in fact, actually what we need is more light. So let me take care of that. see if a 5 8 is going to fit up in here. Um, this is a 5 8 bolt. Let me see if I can find a thin wall 5 8 socket. Um, this doesn't seem like the right amount of clearance here. Uh, and of course this will move anywhere I need it except to create access. It looks like it might be bent. Yeah, I don't know. Let me let me bring it back. see if it'll stay long enough to let you guys see me try my next stunt. So first let's just see if we can get the socket in here and then we'll figure out what the mechanics of it look like. Yes, thank you Jeep for creating zero fucking access. I really wish the people who design this kind of crap had to work on it. Because clearly they don't. Because if they did, they wouldn't do this.
Yeah, so it looks bent right here. I'm gonna get a screwdriver and see if I can move that over because it, it, it feels loose. This is not really the screwdriver I had in mind, but I don't even know where the hell it came from. We'll see if it works. Joke. Where's that socket? There's some kind of heat shield in my way now. Next question is, did it move? So let's try again. <clears throat> well, that might be enough. I can just tell you that this is really hard to get a um, wrench or a socket in on. I was really hoping to be able to get this to uh, just slip on. Even if it did, I don't know how I'd get a wrench on it. So let me get a, uh, a box wrench and see if I can. Uh, that's going to be painful, but let me see if I can do it. Hey Siri, what's 5 eighths in, of an inch in millimeters? So, oh, nothing like a face full of dirt. <laughs> 
Ähm good way. I don't even know if I could get something up there to cut it. Although, I mean, arguably I could get a blade in from the side, but it might be a lot more invasive than I wish prefer. <laughs> shouldn't be that bad either, but I'm pretty confident there's not space for this. So I was really hoping that I could just kind of scoot this thing over. I'm going to see if I can force it out. <clears throat> it's possible. Unlikely, but possible.
So, a little bit light on our subject. This is exciting, not in a good way. Alright, we're going to try what we have not tried so far, and we're going to see if we can bend that piece of shit out of the way. The problem is getting the pressure right where I need it, and that ain't gonna do it.
I don't think I can get in there. No, I can't. I mean, this is the most promising thing yet that actually fits. But it doesn't. I really can't get in here at the right angle. Let's see if we can just open it up with one of these. have done it. Let's play we're feeling lucky today and stick one up here. Right, reset my headlamp and grab a socket that will quite fit. Problem is I can't I can't turn my wrist up here. Hey, you know what? That's a lot more engagement than I had before. So let me beat on it some more. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. First, it doesn't fit. Pound on it. Use of tools 101. I've never used a wrench as a drift before, but it seems to work pretty well. Alright, that looks pretty damn good. Now, what we really want to get up in here 
is a big socket, but I don't see that happening. Let me see if I can get this in here. See if it's an angle problem. clearance issue there with that one so So I keep going back to wobble sockets or wobble extensions because I think they're stronger than U joints and then it's going to take a fair amount of force to break this loose. That feels like it gauges just a little bit. Right, so let me put some extensions on here and see if that gets me enough distance to break this. So I'm going to do something unconventional, I'll grab another power tool, be right back.
close, but no cigar. It actually does look like it moved. So we gotta beat our way in here. Tell if that got me anywhere or not. I do believe it did. I think this bolt's bent. That's part of my problem. really think that's getting me anywhere. This is an incredibly difficult bolt to turn. Hey, that's it. This bolt is definitely bent, which is part of my problem, because I can see it wiggling. 
it. Thank God I sprayed this with pee blue plaster. Ouch, damn it. Good riddance. Yay! Part one of this fucking nightmare is done. All right, so now we get to work in the back. But first, a break. No, I need to get closer. think about this.
Ouch. So after carefully studying one of the bolts I extracted, I realized, you know, this is a 15 millimeter bolt, not a 5 8 And they are close. They're very close in size. So I'm gonna see if a 15 millimeter socket will actually fit in here in either three-eighths or half-inch drive. Nope. sounds of my fat ass under here. Hey, you know what? My frustration is a lot cheaper than a professional mechanic's frustration. And I don't know what they would do differently here. Now would be a good time to mention that you should wear safety glasses or glasses of some sort. When working on bullshit like this, that's hard to get to. I really don't see a socket going up in here as much as I might like. But I might be able to get enough of it on here to do something with it. Now that I know what size it is.
so I've got a little bit better ratchet and I found a couple more 15 millimeter sockets because there's a good chance that one of these isn't going to work but one of them will. Yeah, that's not going to be it either. I've got just the ratchet for this. I just don't know where that ratchet's at right now.
I do think it moved to 16th of a turn. God, it's going to be a long day if I have to fight this thing the whole way. Alright, so it's in the groove. And I'm really just using this as a wedge. just a little bit. how much it's moving.
So I just need this to go around a couple times and then I can get a socket on it and it'll be short work. This is an exceptionally shitty access. What I really need is a short, stubby 5 8 wrench that I could get in here and swing around. But I don't own such a creature. And I'm not really in the mood to cut one of my wrenches up. fight this out to the bitter end. I'm gonna reset my tools, I'll be right back. Okay, so after a nice little break to cool off and check uh, my email, we're gonna crawl under here. We're gonna do the bolts that hold the lower cat to the back of the exhaust. Now, I fully expect this to be a pain in the ass. Why, you might ask? Well, well, I don't know, because there's just no good access. And I've got to get to it from this side. So 
Let me get set up and I'll come back on video. That's not the best of camera positions, but remember I gotta work on this too. So let's add some light. These are these uh, DeWalt um, portable 20 volt lights. I did review these. So if you're curious about them, you can check out my channel. You'll find that tool review. They're a little bit pricey, but I like them. And I bought them specifically for this because I figured there would be moments like this where I needed a good reliable light source and I needed it, I needed to be able to move it around and I didn't want to mess with wires and these will serve me well for a number of projects now. Real question. So, I did shoot these with key blaster. That's the right tool, but we need more extensions. And with luck, we'll be able to reach it. And it is a 15 millimeter socket. With more luck, this will go smoothly. I'm using my 38 soups. I'm using my half inch impact wrench. one that's good now I gotta figure out what the path to madness is for the other one like a two clip extension here but I don't have it and I'm gonna try and get by with what I own. <sighs> All right so a friend of mine called to see what I was what I was doing and uh, where the hell's that thing? So. I think I can do it. I think I can get this up here, but I'm gonna have to move the camera. And. some good still yet. Nope, not happening. All right. <clears throat> I ain't gonna do anything either. Let me get a ratchet.
This is a Schittsburg Harbor Freight Ratchet. Yes, I called it what you thought I called it. Might still be able to get this up in here after all. See if we can just do it with a ratchet. So what I'm doing is reaching up over the muffler to access this. Thing you can buy in China. But you know, if you're shopping at Harbor Freight, that's kind of what you get. It would have been so hard to have just put a little access door in this. It's asinine to think that you should have to drop. And I, what I'm trying to avoid is dropping the uh, transmission to get to this. 
Although that may ultimately end up happening. It just hurts my hands to work up underneath here like this. the wrong direction but let's check. Yeah, that is the wrong direction. So to ensure that this is a complete clusterfuck, there is a blind, or there's a bolt back here you can't reach on the back side of the clamp. So you've got to get a wrench up in here on that bolt. Might need more than a wrench. Might need another socket. No, 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 it just needs to be taken up. There's not a bolt back there. Pain in the ass.
So that's a 3 8 to half inch adapter with a 3 8 wobble socket. big wrench in. So I managed to bring it between the cat and the up down here. Make sure there's no other sensors. gotta be fucking kidding me. just doesn't want to fucking move with the transmission in here. Well, I guess it's not that much harder to pull the transmission. It's just going to be a pain in the ass to put it all back in. Motherfucker. Thank <laughs> you. 
brackets what I'm hung up on. I really don't want to lower the transmission. I don't see that I have a choice though. that whatever it is designed this never had to work on it. Because you can't get the fucking thing apart. Another half inch of clearance. You know, a longer cat, a little bit narrower cat. Wouldn't have an issue. A detachable bracket. Wouldn't have an issue. This has got to cost Chrysler lots and lots and lots of money when they have to work on these. I don't see any other option other than lowering one side of the transmission. That's what I was really trying to avoid. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a huge deal. And it doesn't look like I have a choice.
If the jacks weren't so old, I would trust them more than I do.
How's that one go? There it is. Never enough room under here. So that's a backup jack to stop it from dropping more than an inch. Because I don't want I, I don't I don't want any surprises. Piece of shit, get out of here. All right, so I have to go down a little bit more.
What a pain in the ass. Really, really, really. It's the stupid bracket that's actually in the way. So now I'm caught between the axle and What a pain in the ass. Good thing I wanted that down. Because once that puppy comes down, it's down. Well, maybe not. Let's straighten the wheels out.
I will say, I'm impressed with the transmission mounts. That's all that's holding that damn thing in. Friends, that was a pain in the ass to get this out. And you know what? I was right. This is bent. You can see it right there. So I'll um, have to put that in a vise and beat on it. Try to get this bent back out a little bit. What a pain in the ass. All right, so let's take a look at the catalytic converters, seeing as they're out. Um, in pretty darn good shape. I don't see anything that really worries me. Let's flip this one up and we'll take a look at it. It's much easier to ex examine in this condition. Uh, a little bit of soot here, but the converter itself looks fine. I don't see any melting and I don't see... I see some crap in here, but I think that'll come out. Um, this engine was running like shit when I bought it. Um, the spark plugs were way out of time, so... Nothing surprises me. Anyway, I'm gonna put this somewhere safe and I'll let you guys actually watch. So my definition of safe is up there because crackheads would steal this in a heartbeat. Yeah. I need to start taking apart the fuel injector assembly. Uh, shouldn't be seeing bare wire there, but it's probably okay. And I need to get this wiring harness off. I've been told this is a friction friction fit, but <laughs> a lot of friction here. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I'm gonna break something the way I have to pull. But that can certainly come off, and this can come off. Uh, that should be pretty self-explanatory. Where do these wires go? Uh, that's for the air conditioning, so we can figure out how this fucking mystery down here works. There's an air conditioning sensor down here. There's a connector on the back, and all this plastic crap is fried. So it looks like more than one. Okay, so the other one is one of my oxygen sensors. That's cool. Uh, and 
I've got some more stuff up here. bracket for the fuel line and that's going to have to come off here and then the fuel line itself will need to be disconnected um, so that comes off oh, that's some kind of stupid lock that I don't understand there it goes so that's off So basically got to pick my way across all these sensors. There we go. So there's a bolt there and there. And then that comes apart. So I'm feeling pretty good here. I just don't know where all these little wires are at. So that has to come off and I'm gonna mess with this tomorrow. I think I'm gonna stop for the night. I'm gonna go eat dinner and I'm gonna relax. I got a lot done, even though it's just one battle. I know there's people who would push on and push through this, but that's not me. I need to figure out how to get this plastic piece of crap out of the way. Uh, and that's going to give me access to the bolts and then i need to find or i need to dig up my boxes of bolts so that i can find the appropriate size nuts to go on here so i can put lifting chains in here because that's going to be real soon in this engine's future i will deal with that after the engine's out where i have a little more space to mess with it um you know i probably could could jack with this in here but not today Satan. not today and um this clutch i don't i don't like seeing this loose um and considering that this hit i i don't know if this could be bent back or not i mean if y'all want to tell me what you think in the comments if this could be bent back um but uh Definitely got a lot of work to do to get this out of here. I think there's another three or four, maybe eight hours uh, at the speed that I'm working by myself. So whatever. And you know, I mean, you know, the frame is right here, and that's why we want to get the engine out of here so that they have room to work in here. And um, I think it'll make it a lot easier. And if I make it easier for the frame shop, it's cheaper for me, and I get a better job. This jack shaft is jacked. It's bent. Um, but, you know, one thing at a time, and we will get there eventually. I'm not in a big hurry. This is not my daily driver. This is a toy. Uh, it's a toy for me personally, and I'm going to drag it behind my bus conversion that will eventually become an RV. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe, and uh, you know, click the little bell icon so you find out when I post new videos. And remember, I use playlists to organize my videos, so just follow the playlists.